Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse here. I know you're enjoying our YouTube videos. People say it all the time, comments. So like this video and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you will know when we post new content. That's like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Now watch this and be blessed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis. Once again, thank you for tuning in to our boardroom chats. And so many people enjoy these things. Normally, we don't hold a program this long. You know, we'll change them all the time. This has been one of the most popular things I think we've ever done. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, well. boardroom, and I got that, actually, how I got that idea was uh, uh, Franklin Delano Rose, FDR. It was called Fireside Chats. Yeah way back when and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't born during that time, but I'm just saying. It was your idea it. to title it, but it wasn't your idea to do it. Yes. <laughs> but you're glad you did. I'm glad and I did. That, it this is just... number 224. That's how many we've done since we started in 2020. Since 2020, my mm -hmm. Lord, what a blessing of the Lord. God is so good and gracious, but we thank you for tuning in today. And I hope you, in fact, if you don't mind, I'd like you to share this boardroom chat with other friends, tell them to go to our website and find out what we do in this ministry it would be a blessing to them as well as to us. And it's such a, I mean, me, I mean that sincerely, spiritually, physically, financially, the anointing of increase is on my life in a financial way, in a spiritual way, and a physical way. It's just such a blessing of the Lord. So we'd like to share that with other people. And, uh, and, and, and people that watch it, they really get blessed. In fact, last week we were talking about perilous time. We didn't have time to actually read some of the uh, boardroom uh, chat's testimony. So would you like to start with that? Yeah, that's a Let's great do idea. That. Yeah. Okay, this one is from Julie. She says, hello, Jesse and Kathy. Thanks for always blessing me with your teachings. I pray for more anointing on you both in Jesus' name. I love you guys. Watching from the UK. The United Kingdom. What a blessing I got. Thank you, and Julie. Winifred says, thank you, Dr. Jesse and Kathy, for your precious time sharing the Word of God. Good morning from Melbourne, Australia. I tell you, we've got a lot of people all over the world watching this. What else yeah, we and got? even in the Spanish... Melbourne, I like Melbourne, too. It's so nice. Yes, and, and the Spanish community, uh, Martin says, God bless you, Brother Jesse. I, greeted, I greet you from Guatemala. It's a blessing to hear everything that God has revealed to you. They translated this one because, you know, all of this is... Our boardroom chats are translated also into Spanish. Well, I've never been to Guatemala, but I've flown over it many times. <laughs> you know? Doesn't count. It doesn't count. But our okay. broadcast goes in there. Our <laughs> chat right. goes in there. And Praise people the there Lord. are being blessed. Praise the Lord. What else we you got? I love that. Diana says, hi, dear brother Jesse, no, brother and sister. Greetings from Romania. We love Romania. your faith messages. They are an encouraging divine meal all the time for us. Oh, that's a blessing of God Amen. from Romania. Romania. You, you have one more? Yes. This one says, it's from Mahara. Jesse is always so full of amazing energy and never slows down. That's the truth. This one also, and then they also say, and Kathy is the best match for him. She is also so full of faith and love for the word. Well, praise so great. God. Thank Hallelujah. You. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate. And send in more because we'd like to read them on the air if we can. We always yeah. love to know how, yeah. how this chat and how any other platform, any other things that we post also are blessing you and touching your life. Uh, now, I want to answer one of these, uh, that's not a question, one of these uh, testimonies. Okay. That Jesse is so full of energy. What gives me that energy? What makes it happen all the time? Living in the will of God. Mm, that's good. I live in the will of God on a daily basis, not just a Sunday basis. And I want to talk about that today. You know, we've touched on it in the past, but not really get into it. The will of God. This is so important of a subject, really. It really is. I mean, you know, and people really don't know what the will of God is. And I've said this many times. If you want to know it quickly, it's Genesis chapter, this is the will of God for man. Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. And then the last two chapters in the book of Revelation. That's four chapters dealing with the will of God for man. Between those four chapters is 1186 chapters of killing, stealing, and destroying my arch enemy called Satan. But Jesus is coming back. Satan's going into the pit. And we're going back to Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, and the last two chapters in the book of Revelation. And man's going to walk in the cool of the day with the Lord again forever and ever. The will of God. But notice this, what Jesus said about the will of God. And I'd like you to go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 6. And I, I love this. The most famous prayer in the world is the Our Father prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, people pray it everywhere. I mean, just anybody, any do, uh, 
denomination, non-denomination, or interdenomination. denomination Yeah, it, I mean, it's just amazing. But it says this in uh, uh, verse 9. After this manner, this is Jesus talking now. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? In oh. earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Notice this. Jesus thought it was important enough to tell you that his will be done in earth and in heaven. And I pulled this old piece of paper up, and I want to talk about the will of God is man's highest wisdom. I mean, when you're walking in wisdom, when you're walking in the will of God, it's very, very important to be in the will of God. I want to read a point that the Lord gave me, and I believe you'll be blessed. What does the will of God do? It produces an inward discernment and a delicacy of perception. In other words, you begin to discern things and perceive things that you never thought you could because you're walking in the will of God. No matter what the world's saying, no matter what the world's doing, no matter how perilous times it is, how crazy all that, if you're in the will of God, I'm telling you, it's amazing. It just goes right by you. I don't deny what's going on. I deny it's right because I'm in, I'm, I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. And since I'm not of it, I walk in the will of God Almighty, see? And that makes it happen. How do you know to stay healthy? It's the will of God. Right. How, why do you believe in healing? It's the will of God. Why do you believe in prosperity? It's the will of God. Why do you believe that you got the promises of your family down to a thousand generations? It's the will of God. Where? Here. See, everybody's always trying to push it off to heaven. And heaven's a great place. I've been there. It's a blessing of the Lord. But God said it here, here in earth, on earth. Say it like you want. Whether it's in earth, on earth, the will of God must be done correctly in every which way, shape, or form. And, and when you understand that, it's a blessing of the Lord. You know, and some people say, you know, they don't believe in healing. That's not for today. We said, now they didn't took that out the will of God. When Jesus said he's the same yesterday, today, and that's forever. Right. Jesus healed everyone. It says all those that came to him, he that's healed right. them. There's not one instance in the Bible where Jesus said, oh, it's not my father's will for you to be healed. No, it's it's his will for all to be healed. Right. Otherwise, Jesus would not have healed everyone. You know, a lot of people, when they pray because they don't have an understanding of the will of God about divine healing, they've, they've had this religious phrase they would tack on the end of a prayer. Sometimes they'll say, Lord, if it be thy will. And that prayer that says, if it bear thy will, is a different type of a prayer. That's not the prayer of faith. It's a prayer of consecration when Amen. you're looking, like Jesus prayed that prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, That's right. That's right. which is different and it's not a part of, just like you wouldn't pay, play football rules when you're playing baseball. There's rules that go with That's prayer. Right. So once you know the will of God, in fact, I love a quote, I often quote from F.F. F. F. Bosworth, a great man of God. I don't know what, he was in the ninth, early 19th century, passed away. Uh, yes, I think anyway, so. Anyway, 18th century. 20th century, no, 1900s, how old was he? I, I think in the early 20th I shouldn't know century. that. Anyway, but I just love, I've read uh, some of his books, and one quote that I love, it says, faith begins where the will of God is known. So when you know the will of God, it builds faith in you for that promise for your own life. Right, and all promises of God are yea and amen. Why? Because it's the will of God. I mean, you, it's amazing how much God wants to be a blessing to his people, and it's amazing to me how, how, how much the church wants to put it down and make it just... Go through things that you don't need to go through in any way, shape, or form to prove that you're saved or whatever whatever you're trying to get to, you know. And, you know, when you know in whom you have believed, you're persuaded that you, that God is, you able, God is able to keep what you give to him. See what I'm saying? So when the Lord saved me, it was the will of God. Yes. Even though I didn't deserve saving, saving because I was such a heathen and everything, but yet God looked beyond my faults and saved me, never thinking that he would give me a ministry. I just, that was the surprise and the shock of my life that I would actually be called to preach the gospel, but it was the will of God, but it was not for the will of man. People told right. me, you're not called to preach, you're well, not this, you're not that. Well, I have been royally persecuted about my, me walking in the preaching anointing and things of that nature, but you know, I've said it so many times. I will take the persecution of the world. I don't care what they say, including the persecution of the church, to stay and believe and be in the will of God. And I want to say this without sounding proud or arrogant, I am in the will of God. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. Nobody is, but I am in the will of God. I enjoy living for Jesus. I haven't lost my passion, I guess you could say, and I like that word passion, 
uh, for my salvation, that God saved me and honored me and blessed me. So we get up every day, we do our daily devotions, me and Kathy, and, and, and really it all boils down to the one statement, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And one answer, the will of God, yeah. <laughs> you know, in every area. You know, a lot of people approach their life with just thinking, what do I want to do with my life? Or you, maybe they train their children, what do you want to be when you grow up? But instead, we should be training our children and thinking of our own life. What would God want me to do? Because God knows us better than we knew, actually oh, know ourselves. Yeah. He knows those gifts that He's put within us. And it's also the children, if they're taught, seek God about His will, perfect will for your life because it will be a good will. It'll be a good thing. And I knew that, that uh, you know, a lot of people, when they are praying for someone, Others may tell them, oh, I don't know if God wants to save that person because that's a wrong doctrine about that. Oh, God, but yeah. The scriptures say, and this is one scripture that I held on to when I was praying for you to be born again, and it's in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. It says, well, in fact, let me go back to verse 3 Okay. because it, it sets it up. For this is good and, ex well, yeah, <laughs> you, it's going to go. But anyway, I, read the whole no, I'm going to just do verse 4. He's, it's talking about God who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So it's Amen. God's will for all men to be saved, men meaning mankind, men and women, chill well, boy and know, girl. I got to answer. I heard a lady on um, um, Instagram say this, there's no hell. Yes, there is. Well, our loving father, our loving God would not send anybody to hell. I agree with you 100%. He never sent anybody. They send themselves. The will of God is for you to go to heaven. The, not, the will of God is not for you to go to hell, but you know, you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a choice. And, and why, why wouldn't you choose heaven? Why wouldn't you choose to live with the Lord Jesus Christ? Why wouldn't you choose to have a hard time to sin? Why wouldn't you choose that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's because the reason why you don't choose it, because your flesh is, is overpowering your soul and overpowering your spirit, when really your spirit should overpower your soul and body. See what I'm saying? So that you don't do those things. So it's the will of God. People, And I say this all the time, and I've, I've been persecuted for it, but I'll say it to Jesus. Come, I don't sin every day. I think that's one of the worst lies ever perpetrated by the church. True. Because you know what it is? It's a feeling thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel, yeah. I mean, you know, it's this, a compromised, no. yeah. compromised lifestyle. It's wrong. It's wrong. No, I, we've all sinned. Yes, we've all been sinners, but we're not all, we're not sinners no more because we got born again. And it takes away personal responsibility. Amen. I say, well, I can't help myself. It's, you know, yeah, like, what on. was that Flip Wilson years ago we'd hear on the, t the devil made me do it? He said, the devil <laughs> made me do it. And they had that movie, uh, Waterboy, at the devil. The devil. <laughs> you know, devil. Whatever it was. And that's just so true, you know. Uh, but People you know what? Say the that, but I'll it, tell you something that's powerful. The devil can't make you do anything. You're actually stronger than the devil, even if you're not saved. You want me to explain that? How many times the devil told you to go out and sin and you went, no, nah, I'm too tired. I'm going to go home and go to bed. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to get some sleep. Yet he told you to go out chasing women or chasing men or, I mean, drinking booze to the point that you just almost kill yourself and whatever sin you, uh, he wants you. And you went, no. In other words, your flesh is actually stronger than the devil. So how much more is a person that's born again walking in the anointing of God and in the will of God stronger than the devil. Hmm. So don't give me that, that dumb, stupid excuse. The devil made you do it. No, no, you did that because you wanted to. You see, it's just literally that simple. But when you're in the will of God, I do that because I want to. I enjoy being in the will of God. I enjoy being the blessing God wants me to be, whether it may be spiritual, it may, it may be physical, it may be financial. Here's a point that I wrote many, many years ago about this. A, a living, active will creates a kingdom. See, God has a living, active will, and he created a kingdom. What his kingdom, the kingdom of God, God's way of doing and being right. See, the will of God is something we have to do. God's will is only done as we help him to do it. Let me read that again so you'll understand. The will of God is something we have to do. God's will is only done as we help him to do it. See, he won't force that on you. That's what I love about God. He don't force nothing on you. Satan will stick your head in the ground and kill you. Not God. He, I like when he told Moses to tell the people, I put before you life and death and blessing and cursing. God tells you what he would choose. Choose life that you and your seed may live, not survive or just get by. See, the will of God is for you to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in and blessed going out. What does the word bless means? Empowered to prosper. So you're going to tell me you don't believe in prosperity when God says, I empower you to do so? Mm -hmm. I mean, he said, thou shalt, Deuteronomy 8, 18, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he who God, 
who giveth thee power to get wealth. So you mean to tell me if I get wealth, I'm greedy? Well, maybe I'm in the will of God. Maybe I'm just being biblical, but it's not a maybe about it. Like they say, uh, don't use the maybe, baby. It is God's don't will. Abuse, yeah. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't, you know, it is God's will for, you, for, will for you to be blessed spiritually, physically, financially, every which way, shape, or form. And, you know, that's why he put it in the Our Father prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So, you know, it, it, let me tell you, you'll get persecuted living on the earth like you're living in heaven. You know, and, and let me give you a prime example. There's pretty nice things in heaven, huh? And right. my father's house are, is what? Many, many mansions. mansions. They got diamond, barrel, jasper, onyx, ruby, gold, everything. No, why can't you have that here? Oh, that's greed. No, it's not. That's heaven stuff. What's wrong with having heaven stuff on earth? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching. Good. Listen, that's the will of God, you to be blessed. You know, we saw a commercial today, or actually we were watching the news and uh, they showed gold, uh, some gold bars or something. I don't know what we were watching. Yeah. And I like what I you said. I think gold had gone up. Yeah, gold, gold going up gold real high, over $2,400 an ounce. And Kathy said, well, you know, gold is pretty. It's really pretty. It is pretty. Mm -hmm. It's a Shiny. blessing of the lot. Shiny. Of the, and most jewelry that you see is Pure. usually gold. The platinum. more gold in it. Yeah, more gold. The I see. The more pretty it is. Yeah. Because you can have like 10 karat gold, right? Yeah, you got 10 karat, karat, 14 karat. 14, 18 is really bright. 18 and then 24. 24 karat. is a little too soft to wear It's a little jewelry, soft, but, but it's kind of nice to handle. You it's know nice in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when you see that on the TV, those yeah. bars. So when you understand, uh, I, I, I don't care how, how wealthy someone is, especially when they're born again because, and they have nice things, they just being biblical. Well, their will of the will of God in earth is helping them, and they're living just like as if they'd be living in heaven. Now, I don't know how the church world can't see that. But, you know, they're blind. The Bible says blind lead the blind, and, and they fall into the ditch. You see what I'm saying? But when you understand that this active will of God is active in everyone's life. See, you know, no one has any right to be resigned to ignorance. Hmm. There are a lot of ignorant preachers. They, 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 they're not dumb. They're very smart in the Word of God in terms of homiletics, hermeneutics, philosophy, theology. But they're ignorant when they come to spiritual things. I've said this before. They don't have what I call responsible spirits. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because, you see, they're like the Pharisee and the Sadducee. It's all about this, 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 this. You know? And I've said this so many times, and you have to understand that. Everything in the Bible, in this wonderful Word of God, is truthfully stated but not everything in the Bible is a statement of truth. And there's a lot of things that are preached as statements of truth because they're in the Bible, but they're not, uh, they're truthfully stated, but they're not statements of truth. You see, and, but because it's in the Bible, what I love about the Bible is that God showed people's failures as well as their successes. Why? Because he knew that everybody would be, that he created were human. You could make a mistake, but thank God for the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So simple, you know what I'm saying? So that's what, what I mean by walking in the will of God. That's why I don't blink when somebody wants to criticize me about the plane I fly or whatever, or the house I live in, or the wife that I'm married to, or whatever, you know, and things of that nature. Why would anybody criticize me? I don't know. I mean, I get criticized all the time. I don't think you ought to have Kathy. Kathy, it's too good for you. Oh. You know? Oh, yeah. No, I've <laughs> no. had it happen. Oh, yeah, many times. I never tell her that because it go to her head. But I mean, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, you know, because there's always somebody that just don't, don't like me. But it's amazing how many people don't like me, follow me. I can't get over that. I mean, if you don't, you know, if I don't like something, well, let me just tell you the truth. I mean, I love food. I'm from New Orleans. I think we got the best food in the world. But I don't like curry. You will never find me in a curry restaurant. You will never find me eating curry. Why? I don't like it. Why? Because it's not the will of God for me. <laughs> I just can't. But most people love it. They just enjoy it. They just think it's one, but not me. Uh, you know, but that's okay. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, so I don't know why people want to, persecute me and still follow me. It don't make any sense. And some of them, they can't think twice. You know, they want to put something on Instagram or YouTube or whatever and try to twist my words. Like one person one time said, uh, Kathy caught me saying something. And no, she didn't catch me saying something. We both, we show expression. Let me tell you something. Everything you see and we, we taping here, we could cut it off. We could edit it. You would never see it. You see, but we like to be honorable to you and honorable to God. And this one particular thing I just remind me saying is, and I tell people, and you ain't going to believe this or like this, but it's true. God don't care if an ungodly man is rich. 
He don't care whether it's a godly man being rich or an ungodly man being rich. What God is concerned about is how do you make, how do you make that money and what you're doing with it. That's pretty simple. True. I was reading the scripture one time. You said, Jesse, uh, God was talking about the ungodly people. I already knew that. Right. It didn't make no difference, you see, to God. You see? And, you know, the same thing with going to hell. God never sent one person. It's not his will. But they send themselves. And you know what I'm saying? Because you have a strong will as a human being. And, and, and if you take your will and link it up with God, it's amazing how you'll live in earth, on earth. You'll live just like you're living in heaven. You know, it's, it's news to a lot of people that God really wants you to have a good life because they've ro ro been raised with wrong doctrine uh, right. for years. Maybe they just don't know God as a good God. In fact, when old Roberts preached years ago that he was a good God, he got a lot of criticism oh, from the church, actually. But I, when I got born again, I had never read the Bible. And I started reading the Bible. And one, the first verse of Scripture that I, I memorized I was... Answer the question, why didn't you read the Bible before you were saved? Well, they, the, the church I went to uh, you didn't not encourage... To read it. Well, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't even think about it. We, just, we led the priest to do the reading. And we didn't even own a Bible in the house. Don't and it wasn't a, a priority in, in my life. Y'all didn't have one Bible in y'all? I know. Didn't have a I had like a missile. I had a missile, which is a, is a, a little missile. writings. It had some excerpts from, from the Bible, but not the whole Bible in itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, I remember I started reading it, and I, the first mem uh, scripture that I memorized was in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And it really talks about the will of God in there. Because really, if you don't know God, uh, if you don't know, Once and God's word is revealed in the scriptures. And if you don't read the scriptures, you're not going to know God's will. You're going to think, you're going to believe the lie, which a lot of people are deceived in life because they believe the lies of the devil or lies of ignorant people. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, this is the King James Version. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the now, only way you're going to you, know that. Why did you Why did you do those two verses? I I, I don't know. The Holy Spirit, I believe, was teaching me there, in those days. Led you there. And 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 I I had to learn what God's work, perfect will was. You know, was and the, the only way that I could find it is is by yeah. letting my training my oh yeah. well learning what God's word said. You what? know, it was the first scripture I ever read. Read? Yeah. No, I do not. In the beginning, <laughs> God created the heaven and the earth, page one. Well, that's after you got born again, but you know, no, you no, all had a Bible in your Yeah, home. oh yeah, we had but The first scripture I ever read was... Because you went right in, at the beginning in the of begin the book. Well, yeah, I'm I, I never, I go to, when I pick Well, I'm up not a saying book, that this was the first scripture I read. One. I said this, I read other scriptures, but I this is the first scripture I memorized. I got and you, that was a different level of thinking that I had to really get the word of God in my heart and, you know, the first time I read it, it was just in my head. And mm -hmm. I, um, I really didn't grab the whole meaning of it. The, the Word teaches us that we should meditate on the Word of God. In fact, Joshua, God spoke to Joshua and told him that you're going to, he gave him the Word of God. That's he it. says, you, if you Come meditate on. in it day and night, he says, you're going to have a good success. Amen. He says, you're going to have a good future. So God really wants him to, he wants him to prosper. Yeah. He said, and well, have you a know, good future. Go back I, and read that. I believe that. the Lord made you say that because one of the points I wrote here, Jesus is the light in which the mind and will of God becomes clear. And that's what he was telling Joshua. If you Meditate on the Word of God. Day and night. You'll be a complete success in yes. everything that you're you put You're going to prosper and have good success, yeah. he says. He said, have not, I said. <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, it's just amazing. So you know what? Me. we got to stop being deceived by the devil. we got to stop being deceived by religious thoughts. Maybe we're all brainwashed by the devil. But we have to find out what God's Word says and own up to that. You know, it's hard to chew for some people when they've been taught all their life that poverty is holy. Yeah. Poverty is not holy. Poverty is a curse from the devil. Yeah. And uh, God came that we might have life, Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, uh, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amplified says, to the full, till it overflows. That's the will of God. You know, Kathy, how can anybody say poverty is holy? Have you ever seen these starving babies in African places like that? And you consider that holy? They don't have enough money to feed to feed a child, bloated belly, sick, little flies all over them. I mean, I, and, and you call that holy? You don't see, people have been religiously brainwashed instead of Bible taught. Let me flip over to the political side. 
all this junk that's going on now. See, you have been what I call media brainwashed instead of finding out what is really true. Constantly, uh, people enjoy criticizing people, lying about people. They call, and I'll just bring it up, they call President Trump a liar. And my God, I, 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 I've listened to CNN and MSNBC. They lie all the time. They've lied so much that they believe it's the truth. Now, you know, I think everybody's lied at least probably once in their life somewhere. I understand that. But what I'm saying is, see, that's what I mean by being brainwashed. Well, they, they but the do church is... is the best at brainwashing your body. And they've done that for years, religiously brainwashed. You know, that like poverty is a blessing. When your own mind uh, looks at poverty and wants to reject it, when you see how bad it is. And yet, and, and, or why that, that God sent that cancer to teach you something. Man, do you realize how painful cancer is? You realize how people just beat, slap the piece and lose and wait, can't eat, can't even drink. Water. And you're going to say God sent that to someone to teach them something? But see, that's religious brainwashing. Yeah, it totally is. Go ahead, is. Kath. I didn't mean to cut no, you off. No, that's it. Well, there's another verse of scripture while you were saying that that's so we've often quoted. It's, it's in 3 John chapter yeah. 1. There's only one chapter. Verse 2, it says, Beloved, I wished above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as yeah. I so prosper. Yeah. So that wish, it's, it's God's will. John would not be praying that right. for the church that he was writing to it's so if true. it wasn't the will of God for people to prosper and be in health. And prosperity. He wanted them to live yeah. healthy lives and Amen. have enough food to feed your family. You better know it. Uh, you know, and prosperity, Kathy, is more than money. Money actually is just a byproduct of prosperity. How about feeling good every day? That's prosperity. You know, being happy every day, that's prosperity. Loving your church every day, that's prosperity. Hallelujah. I mean, you see, it's just money is just one small facet. But when people criticize people, money use it because they're jealous that somebody got it or envious, which they should not be. You, yeah. see, you understand what I'm saying? I, I never know. I, this is never, every time I've ever done it, uh, every time I give a nice tip to a, um, a waiter or a waitress, they go, Are you serious? That's what they say. Oh, you mean you want change for this? No, I want you to have it. And I like what Kathy says. You, she'll turn around and say, you did a good job. Mm -hmm. Now, it, uh, I mean, they are shocked. Why? Because maybe they're not used to being prosperous. Or maybe they're used to people saying, just wait on me and I ain't giving you nothing. Mm -hmm. Do you see my point? You see what I'm saying? And many times the tip is bigger than the bill itself. Oh, yeah. So that's uh, why always, they're saying, are yeah, you sure? Yeah. You know, you, we like Chick-fil-A. Some people don't like Chick-fil-A. We, me and Kathy, we eat there quite often. And we, you know, a lot of times they have people walking down, you know, they're serving people, you know, you, you, if you're going to eat in and all that kind of stuff. And we bless those that uh, clean our table. Just We don't have to. We're not paid for it. You know what I'm saying? And they'll just come around and say, would you like us to refresh your drink or something like that? Oh, you, you know, just real nice. They don't have to do that. And I don't have to give them a tip. I guess you could say that. I want to. I believe it's the will of God to tip big. Boy, I'm going to get some persecution on that. I really do. Why? Why you have an opportunity to, to be a blessing to someone. So why wouldn't you do that? You know, especially if you have it. Now, if you don't, that's a different thing. We understand that, you know. So it's just such a blessing to see that. Uh, you know, in some of these hamburger places are going, I've never been in one of those things. But I noticed they got little places where kids can go in and go in slides and come down. You know, they don't have to do that. I know you think, well, they're doing that for marketing so they can get some people to come in to eat. And I understand that. But they don't have to do it. They do it because they want to. There are some places that don't have that. And that they got a right not to have it. But it's nice if a child says, hey, mom. Can I go in there? Yeah, if you want to. And they slide and have fun and things of that nature. That's my point. You see, living in the will of God is a fun thing to That's do. That's why I put a slide in our children's church. Yes, I right. I love that I did because yeah. we're redoing the children's church last year. or I think it was in the summer. It got finished in September of last year. But I wanted the kids to have like a little slide effect. We have, we built a what I call it the Arcatorium. So it's an auditorium where the children come, come together. But I, I uh, ordered this massive wooden slide where they go up into the lap. They actually feel like they're in the ark. And uh, the kids go up and down. I put it, placed it right in the, in the beginning of the room so it would be like a magnet. I wanted kids to be drawn in there. So that's a play spot that they can interact and play with one another I, before I, I, and after the children's i tell you something. I, I'd like to add, we don't have the room for it, but maybe... Well, we believe in God to build Kathy an event center so we can do all this. Thing. I like a merry-go-round, a carousel. 
I always loved those things when I was a little boy, and uh, and uh, I still like them now. And you know, they some of them are so beautiful that the you know those things that go up and down the horse that it's become artwork. It's paint is just gorgeous. We have we're in one in New Orleans at the uh, what's the name of that park? Uh, City Park. And it's one of the most amazing things to see. I have to, to put see. it outside. I don't have an inside blue, I know, but. <laughs> man, but it would be so nice. But like I said, if we built the events, then we could put it maybe in the foyer. I don't see how. I don't know how. But I mean, you know, you know it's just But I like that. the idea. But I tell you, when kids see you see them just light up like. You mean adults are like basically big kids. They'd like it. Well, too. sure, you know. And, you know, and, and, and it's just such a blessing. So I like living in the will of God. And Jesus, I want to, I want to make you very aware. He put that in the Our Father prayer. Yes. That the Father's will will be done in earth. So don't criticize them. If you're going to use your tongue, say some good things about people. You know, and once you know. That's all you got to do. That's good. And once you know the will of God, that's where your prayer point begins. And while you were talking about this, I was remembering uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, how. Uh, oh, that's a great where scripture. Je yeah, verse well, he 11. says, he, uh, he says, thus saith the Lord that after 70 years, Verse 10 is where I want to begin oh, with. I see. For after, thus saith the Lord thy God, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts <clears throat> that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. One translation says a future and a hope. Praise what I wanted God. to bring this out was is because day, um, uh, years later, uh, Daniel was reading the scriptures and he came across this prophecy that Jeremiah wrote here. And he's thinking, this is 70 years afterwards. He was in that, that exile. Mm -hmm. He was reading the scriptures. So then he begins to pray. And so he, once you know the word of God, the will of God, which he saw this will of God in Jeremiah, that they're going to be over there in Babylon in that captivity mm -hmm. for 70 years. But after that, he says, I, I'm gonna, I, I have good thoughts of peace for you. So he starts praying and interceding. Of course, they were delivered and came out of them. But it's important for someone to read the Word of God, find out the Word of God, and then pray it and pull it in. God's will is for you to be blessed and oh, God. prosper. It is. His will for you to be healed and whole. It's His will is for your relationships to be restored. His will is for you to walk in love, Amen. to have joy and, and live every day joyfully in His presence. He and, created us because mm, He's a mm. loving Father who wants a loving family. And doesn't don't all of us love to sure. see a loving family relationship? I, I can think of several families that I that I know well that all of the families are so loving and kind and. And yeah. it's and don't let nobody see. talk you out of it. That's right. Yeah, you're talking about loving families. We have some friends, um, and they really have one of the most loving families. And that's Terry and. Uh, I was thinking yeah, of them yeah. too. I had recently on, a, on one of my glorious living programs, Terry uh, Janes and, and his son Tyler Janes, who plays drums in our church. Well, he has like and their three brother sons, Casey and Miles, Casey, Miles, and, and, the, and the sisters. And, and how the, do y'all see that family wife's... together? It's it's one of the most wonderful things mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just such a blessing to see that. I mean, it, it, it brings a warmness to your heart when you see a, a loving family. They're always smiling and happy yeah. and they work together. It's and also there's some great other family. We have a great family, I believe, too. But also yeah. we have like the Leroy and Carolyn Thompson. Their oh, children that's a family. interact together. You know, Leroy, it's so wonderful. He, he'd been royally persecuted because he preached a sermon called Money Cometh to Me Now. But you ought to see Leroy and Carolyn around their children who are fully grown, their grandchildren. I mean, it's wonderful to see. It's, I, it just makes you feel good. Why? They're good parents. They're good grandparents. I mean, and their children are great parents. I mean, and usually when they do stuff, they always do it together. And they serve the Lord together. Oh, in the church, yeah. The Eat together. together. It's a wonderful thing to see. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm saying all that. I think the world needs to see the family of God Amen. and say, look at these Christian people. It's a wonderful thing to see instead of always trying to criticize somebody because you think they're not believing right or this and that and always wanting to fight and this and that or church splits and things of that. And that's not good family seeing. Let me just say that. So when you understand God's word and walk in the will of God, spiritually, physically, and financially, look at me. It'd be hard to wipe that smile off your face. And I mean that sincerely. So let me say it again. It's in the most important verse, uh, actually the most important prayer I think ever penned by God and spoke by Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it, as is, it is in, in heaven. heaven. That's the will of God, here and there. 
This is Jesse and Kathy saying thank you for tuning into our boardroom chat. And to all our wonderful partners, thank you for supporting the ministry the way you do. Nothing too big and nothing too small. I tell you, we receive your faithful financial support, and 100% of it goes into world evangelism. You know why? It's the will of God. That's right. It for just all is. Men to be saved. Yeah, and that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to be a partner in our ministry, or if you'd like to give today, you can go to jdm.org. That's our website. And hit a donate button there, find out, and you and it will one hundred percent will go. It doesn't go go to me. It goes to the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can use PayPal if you so desire, or you can text to give a one time donation or a recurring one, or you can go to the JDM app and select your giving, or you can mail in an old fashioned check, whatever you want to do. To us, it's 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 not finance. It's people being saved. Amen. And I wish it was free, ladies and gentlemen, but it's not. To do this program is not free. Why? I'm burning electricity. I got cameras on. I'm paying people behind the cameras right now, 24 seven. It's happening all the time. And you know what? That's okay because it's the will of God. Your faithful financial partners, you'll never be a day without prayer. We pray for you daily. And we also pray for those that don't support us. You know why? You know anybody that doesn't need prayer? Mm. Think about that for a minute. So it's just such a blessing. That's the will of God. I hope this boardroom chat minister to you today. So go do something good for someone. Yes. Go do something. Be a blessing. Hallelujah. Going somewhere to bless and God will honor you. Jesse and Kathy said, we'll see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries consent is strictly prohibited.